Welcome to the He's Got Issues Independent Comics Edition number 146.3. I'm John Cooney here to preview new independent comics being released November 5th, 2014, beginning alphabetically with Boom Studios and Adventure Time Volume 4 Bittersweet Graphic Novel. It's that lovely time of year where Princess Bubblegum gets to leave the Candy Kingdom and venture out into the outer limits of Ooh. But when her annual quest to visit old friends takes a dark and unexpected turn, it's up to PB and Peppermint Butler to keep the peace by using the true power Friendship, written by New York Times bestselling author Kate Leth and illustrated by the sensational Zachary Sterling, Bittersweets is a delicious twisted adventure with a surprising aftertaste. Next, we have Amazing World of Gumball number 4. Gumball has to deal with the summertime blues. It was all fun and games at first, but now he's dealing with summer's worst enemy, boredom. It's up to Darwin to cheer up his pal before the blues start infecting everyone on their summer vacation. We've also got Cloaks number 3 of 4. Adam and the Cloaks crew rush to track down Evie before she can convince any of the potential candidates to join her cause, willingly or not. But is Adam been put into the field too soon by his father figure Blackstone, and could he be in grave danger? Next we have Dayman number 5, the start of a new story arc. It's been centuries since the last Justice by Day, a one-on-one -on -one battle between Dayman, but Azalea's fate now rests completely in David's hands. That is, unless he and the rest of the Virgo family are able to uncover evidence of the Scourge's involvement in the Fang trade. We've also got Empty Man number 5 of 6. Having barely survived the journey through Patient Zero's hellscape, Langford and Jensen close in on the location of the kidnapped children. But will the witnesses make them see the glory of the Empty Man before the agents can come to the rescue? Next, we have Fairy Quest Outcast number 1 of 2. The adventures of Red and Mr. Wolf have only just begun. In Fablewood, all the stories that have ever been told live side by side but it is an evil place overseen by the awful Mr. Grimm and his cadre of think police. Red and Wolf want to escape to a world where their freedom isn't prohibited, but nothing can prepare them for what lies ahead in the dark forest. We've also got Fiction Squad number 2 of 6. Jack of Jack and Jill has taken a tumble. Humpty is cracked. The Wicked Witch of the East is buried under a two-story house. Key players are being taken out right and left, and someone is trying to push the Queens of Wonderland and the Witches of Oz into a gang war. It's up to Frankie with his partner Simple Simon to solve the mystery before another death comes knocking at his doorstep. Next we have Garfield number 31, past the stuffing, cranberry sauce, and the all-new issue of Garfield. This month Garfield shares some holiday cheer with the new neighborhood cats, and guest artist Neka Myers joins us to show what happens when Normal tries to mimic the fat cat and eat a massive meal before bedtime. We've also got Over the Garden Wall number 1, two brothers, Wirt and Greg, find themselves lost in the unknown, a strange forest adrift in time. With the help of a shadowy woodsman and an ill-tempered bluebird named Beatrice, they travel through the foggy land hoping to find their way home and encountering all manner of adventures along the way. Next we have Robocop number 5, No Wind Comes Without Its Losses. Lewis's attempt to play the system has given her elevated status among the people, but she's lost all the trust and power within the police system. She will now forever be in Killian's crosshairs. Robocop, now a lone officer, must find a way to defend the streets with no partner and no gun at his side. We've also got Suicide Risk number 19. Leo Winters and Requiem have managed to put aside their differences to face the oncoming threat together, but there's a bigger enemy at play, one that seeks not only to destroy Requiem by any means necessary, but possibly the world. And we've got Woods number 7. The swarm has finally arrived and is going to take the combined efforts of both the kids and the mysterious hunters to survive the onslaught. Meanwhile, we take a look at Ben on the night of the play one year ago and his struggles to both be himself and be happy. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got Aliens vs. Predator, Fire and Stone, number 2 of 4, AVP, Battle Royale, a terminally ill scientist's desperate experiments yields deadly results and offers the Predators a chance to hunt an invincible new game. Next, we have Angel and Faith, season 10, number 8. The tribal vampires have the upper hand, with Riley back to being vampire food. Faith works on a straight-up, strong-arm jungle rescue, while Angel plans to turn the tables on Amy the Rat to keep her from the real target. We've also got Concrete Park, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, number 3 of 5. Barrio La Cruces erupts in violence as Isaac fights side by side with the strange gang leader Silas. Supernatural forces stalk the streets of Scare City, and an aggressive Luca takes her fight to the Potato King. Concrete Park is a dark, sexy sci-fi saga by Tony Pierre and Erica Alexander. Next, we have Ghost Number 9, a great jumping-on point. Ghost has recovered all of her memories as Alyssa Cameron, 
but instead of this making things easier, it just highlights the differences between who she was and what she's become. Can Alyssa be the ghost and still retain her humanity, or will Ghost run out of control? We've also got Ghost Fleet number one. For the world's most valuable, dangerous, or secretive cargo, you don't just call any trucking service, you call the Ghost Fleet. When one of the world's most elite combat trained truckers takes a forbidden peek at his payload, he uncovers a conspiracy that will change his life forever. A new series of badass action on the open road begins here from the critically acclaimed writer of Buzzkill. Next we have Skyman One Shot. Sergeant Eric Reed may have survived the Skyman program's assassins and exposed its corruption, but he's about to find that wearing the Skyman belt and trying to do the right thing means there will always be a target on his back. Can he take the heat, or will he burn up in the atmosphere? And we've got Yusagi Yojimbo Senso number 4 of 6, Yusagi vs. Aliens. Trapped underneath the wreckage from another Martian rocket's crash landing, Yusagi and Tamo only have one way out through the alien craft. As they desperately fight for their lives, one major villain returns and another makes a fateful decision. With the town ravaged and more rockets on the way, is all hope finally lost? From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Blood Queen number 6 of 6. You knew it was coming. A decision is going to be made. Kingdoms will be shattered. Revelations are at hand. And for Elizabeth, could it be time to assume a crown? Everything changes in a moment, a tale that we could only call Reborn. It's the most shocking issue yet for the series that Sci-Fi Pulse calls bloody magnificent. Next, we have Chastity number 5. Finally discovering a few of the secrets of her unlife, Chastity and an unexpected ally go after the murderous Alice. But will Chas finally get the chance to exact revenge on the woman who destroyed her family, or will the council beat Chastity to the punch? The first story arc comes to a head in Disco Bloodbath. We've also got George R.R. R. Martin's A Game of Thrones number 22. Drogo is dying of his wounds. Daenerys will do anything to save him, even if it means embracing forbidden blood magic. But such spells carry a deadly price, and as the pregnant Danny is about to learn, that price will be far harder to bear than any graveside grieving. Now Sansa Stark, still betrothed to the mad young King Joffrey, yet no longer in love with him, finds herself as much a prisoner as Lord Eddard was, facing a fate as cruel and capricious, and is final. Next we have Jennifer Blood, born again, number 4 of 5. Licking her wounds and hiding, Jen is forced to reinvent herself under the watchful eye of the hitman assigned to kill her. It's the strangest romance of the year, but will her new training be enough to win against her vicious imposter? Jennifer Blood's life and the future of Los Angeles ride on the answer. We've also got John Carter, Warlord of Mars, number one. John Carter, Warlord of Mars, returns in a new monthly series officially authorized by Edgar Rice Burroughs, Inc. Superstar writer Ron Mars finally gets to pen the series he's always wanted to write with amazing new art talent Abhishek Nashuni joining him. Return to the exotic landscape of Barsoom as John Carter has to save his adopted world, not to mention his beloved Dejah Thoris, from an enemy like no other he has ever faced. John Carter must truly become Warlord of Mars against an adversary who is every bit his equal on the Savage Red Planet. An amazing new era for John Carter of Mars starts here. Next, we have Little Vampy Holiday Special 2014 one-shot. Christmas has come to Stoker, Maine, and nobody is more excited than resident monster fighter Little Vampy. But when an evil curse steals Christmas from the minds of mankind, Vampy must team with a beast of holiday lore to save Santa Claus, defeat a pagan god bent on revenge, and save Christmas for boys and girls around the world. We've also got Solar Man of the Atom number 6, Solar vs. Outer Space. Erica is trapped far from Earth, and every alien wants to kill her. So Erica's really only got one option, fight outer space. It's one weird girl and her energy ghost dad versus everything in the universe, brought to you by Frank J. Barbieri and Jonathan Lau. Next we have Turok Dinosaur Hunter number 9, all new arc, the perfect jumping on point. Turok heads to England, meets Robin Hood, gets swept up in an out-of-control struggle for power, and starts to learn why dinosaurs still exist, and what it has to do with asteroids and falling in love. Seriously, that all happens in this issue. And we've got Vampirella number 6. In Total Eclipse of the Heart, the final chapter in the Our Lady of Shadow story arc, Vampirella must battle the king of the Nosferatu, the oldest vampire in existence, if she wants to keep her demonic lady Umbra from laying claim to her body and soul, thereby triggering the start of the apocalypse. As she frantically races against the clock, the sudden reappearance of Father Nicodemus and the Vatican's elite hit squad, the Witch's Hammer, threatens to ruin everything. Can Vampirella break free of Lady Umbra's control in time to save an innocent little girl from being sacrificed by Ethan Shroud? Or will her heart finally fall into eternal shadow? 
Nothing from IDW this week, but from Image Comics, we've got 68 Homefront number 3 of 4. The Winter Snows Run Red and the Northern Lights Shine on the Dead as 68 Homefront travels to Black Falls, Canada for the opening chapter in this all-new two-issue story arc, Dodgers. Doug and Bobby Hacker, twin teenagers running from the draft, running from the specter of death in Vietnam, find more than they bargain for as slavering sled dogs, rotting mounties, and a vicious, desperate mountain man bring the undead contagion to the frozen north. Next, we have American Legends number one of five. American Legends one through five weekly throughout November, depicting the extraordinary exploits of the legendary pioneers Davy Crockett, Mike Fink, and Sally Ann Thunder on a quest to save the Lewis and Clark expedition and thwart a conspiracy hatched by Napoleon to destroy the promising future of a young American nation. Featuring a unique look at the Hatfields and McCoys, Johnny Appleseed, Paul Bunyan, Sacagawea, and many, many more. These are the stories of the great frontiersmen who explored the magical and savage frontiers before becoming mythical heroes in American folklore. These are the tales of your youth, known and loved by all. These are the American legends. We've also got Artifacts number 40, double-sized series finale. Ron Mars returns to the title he helped launch with the self-contained Magdalena story foreshadowing his new Magdalena series coming in January while wrapping up Artifacts. Also inside are two Talent Hunt winter stories, one a story of the Witchblade Deep in the Heart of Africa in 1904, and the other a present-day story of Tom Judge trying to help a man affected with an ancient curse. Next we have Birthright number 2, what is the line between fantasy and delusion? In the aftermath of last issue, the Rhodes family is looking for answers, and nothing is what it seems. We've also got two number 44, Chicken Tenders Part 4. Warning, sissies will need an adult diaper before reading this one. No joke, no lie, this will be the most talked about issue of Chew in years. Next we have The Fuse number 7, Gridlock Part 1. 22,000 miles up, there is still no backup. They call it gridlocking, maglev bike races across the fuse's vast solar arrays. Vast, dangerous, and very illegal. When a gridlocker turns up dead, Clem and Ralph begin their own race to catch a killer. Plus, bonus backup strip tabloid starts this issue. We've also got God Hates Astronauts number 3. The awkward name-calling and gentle smooching of anthropomorphic superheroes just got awkwardly smoochier. Muggings continue to transpire at an alarming rate. Someone better call the anti-mugger. Next, we have Hack Slash Son of Sam Hain number 5. The shocking slash pack conclusion to Son of Sam Hain. Has Cassie found a new partner or her killer? We've also got Humans number 1. Apart they are nothing, deemed by society as outcasts, misfits, losers, no good punks. But together they are the humans. The humans is a high octane, no holds barred, eight biker gang chopper ride into 70s exploitation genre bliss. Follow Bobby, Johnny, and the humans as they fight to fly down the road to oblivion on a ride filled with chains, sex, leather, denim, hair, blood, bananas, and chrome. Next we have Imperial number 4 of 4. This is the day that will change a life forever. Seriously, it will. But how? Will Mark take the ring of Katie, the woman who has chosen him to be her lifelong soulmate? Or will Mark take the crown of Imperial, the hero who has selected him as mankind's next great protector? Or is there some third option Mark could never see coming? Probably the last one. That would be fun. We've also got Little Depressed Boy supposed to be there too, number two. As his friend's life opens up into new opportunities, LDB must stand up for himself at his own job. Next we have Madame Frankenstein number seven of seven. The creature confronts her creators both try to maintain the control they so desperately crave. But as with many things, the more someone wants something, the easier it is to lose. It's the gruesome grand finale that promises to be more strange and horrific than anything you've seen so far. We've also got Mercenary C number seven. Johnny One Note, the book BuzzFeed calls one of the top indie comics you should read, returns with an all-new adventure. Jack Harper, captain of the venture, tracks down clues about the legend of Koji Ra from an antiquities dealer in occupied China. Next, we have Nailbiter number 7, guest starring Brian Michael Bendis. Brian Michael Bendis comes to Buckaroo, Oregon, looking to do research on a comic book about the ultimate serial killers. If you've ever wanted to see Bendis running in the dark and screaming in fear, this is the comic for you. We've also got Nightworld number 4 of 4, the Forsaken Spirit Plenilunio's Secret, the final confrontation at Helena's Fortress, the smart-ass schemes of Underboss, the high-speed chase to hell comes to its explosive emotional finale as mortals and demons stand against their most frightening foes, but what will happen when they come face-to-face -face with themselves? Next, we have Penny Dora in the Wishing Box number 1 of 5. 
Once upon a time, on the day before Christmas, a young girl named Penny Dora found a mysterious box on her front doorstep. A magic box with the power to grant wishes, but what she's about to learn is the true and creepy meaning of Be Careful What You Wish For, an all-ages fantasy adventure book for fans of Coraline and Courtney Crumbrin. We've also got Punks, the comic number two. Hold on, we're still publishing this? I thought we were just screwing around, and now what? We're publishing this thing again? Just tell me there's less groin punching this time, please. Next, we have Real Heroes number four. The cast of the Olympians' movies have been taken to a world where their fiction is a reality. Asked to save the world, they were scattered and terrified as the mutants and brainchild came for them. Now the awful truth about this world and its heroes is revealed as the devastators come to rip the earth apart. We've also got Spawn number 248. With Sarah still unresponsive at the hospital, Jim's paranoia heightens with all those treating her. Frustrated by a lack of information, Jim asserts his power to get answers he needs. Meanwhile, Mark tries to crack the mystery of what happened to Sarah and Jim, but is interrupted by someone who appears to be an ally. He alerts Mark to the evil Jim is spreading and wants to stop it once and for all. Next, we have spread number four, Ravello and his raiders on one side, Church of the Risen God on the other, with no hope and Molly in the middle. This probably won't end well. We've also got superannuated man number four of six, Having barely survived the torturous annex of the mad scientist Armadillo Jones and his assistant Leopoldo, the human called He escapes deeper into the vicious underbelly of Blackwater and finds himself in even worse circumstances. Next we have Tech Jacket number 5. Zack Thompson entered the Colossal as Tech Jacket, but what will he leave as? Plus his parents make a very important decision that could, like, seriously screw things up for him at a time when he really doesn't need it. Seriously. We've also got 10 grand number 11. What began with a simple assignment has turned into a war for the very throne of heaven itself, with Joe Fitzgerald caught between two massive armies of light and dark. It all comes down to one decision, one moment, and based on what he decides, the universe itself may come apart at the seams. Will Joe go all the way for love, or will he save the world but lose his soul? Next, we have Tooth and Claw number one. Marvel's and Astro City writer Kurt Busiek returns to Image Comics with rising star artist Ben Dewey for an all new ongoing series. Conan meets Game of Thrones meets Command Eye, an original high fantasy epic for mature readers, as a secret conclave of wizards brings a legendary champion back through time to save the world with disastrous consequences. The action begins in a spectacular double sized first issue with 44 pages of story with no ads for the regular price of just $2.99. And we've got Velvet number 8. Velvet takes her battle right to the heart of the agency's headquarters, literally. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Bloodshot number 25. A murderer's row of all-star talent is going all in for the oversized 48-page milestone anniversary blowout chronicling the classified history of Valiant's most dangerous, most brutal, most relentless hero, Bloodshot. Meet the man behind Bloodshot, or is he? When one soldier's untappable killer instinct takes over in a feature-sized lead tale of blood, guts, and heart by Peter Milligan and Louis LaRosa, plus an all-new story by comics master Howard Chaikin. The original Bloodshot launch team of Dwayne Sorinsky and Manuel Garcia joined forces again for an all-new adventure, and Duffy Bordeaux and Albert Nueva take you on Bloodshot's journey from the end of the line with Hardcore to the Colombian jungles where Unity found him, along with many more bonus stories and artwork, a complete cover gallery, and more. Next, we have the death-defying Dr. Mirage, number three of five, down in the darkness, below the veil of the living world deep in the lands of the dead. Dr. Mirage fights her way through the evils and monstrosities that besiege the spirits, but the real monsters live in the world above, where a sinister hit squad tries to put an end to Mirage's mission permanently. And we've got Eternal Warrior, Days of Steel, number one of three. The Eternal Warrior, Gilad Anipada, the Earth's fist and steel, is forever charged with guarding the Geomancer and securing the Earth's safety. After completing another brutal mission, the Earth's undying guardian is approached with a cryptic task, find and save a baby in whose hands might rest the fate of an entire people. But the Eternal Warrior is no nursemaid, and to complicate matters, a thousand Mygar invaders want the baby dead. At the edge of civilization, can history's most expert killer keep one precious life alive? Out in trades this week, we've got The Walking Dead Volume 22, a new beginning trade paperback. In the aftermath of All Out War, we discover a new beginning. Collects The Walking Dead number 127 to 132. Okay, so that's a look at some of the top independent publishers this week, but there's still plenty of other books out as well, so be sure to check out my YouTube channel at he'sgotissues.com 
to see both the Marvel and DC videos for this week, as well as my usual roundup of all my favorites for the week with a little more depth and insight than you get here. And if you like these videos, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. You can also follow He's Got Issues on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Tumblr to see everything I'm reading as I read it. So until next week, I'm John Cooney, and I've got issues.